Noddy. Hey, Noddy. Is he moving? No, it's a visitor. Up and back. Looks like a prearranged signal. Who is it? Don't know. There's a new one. I haven't got any chewy on you, have you, mate? No. Shit. Who wants you? 224, DDI. Don't get stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sergeant Peter Faithful from the Majors. Thanks. Any change? No, mate. We're still inside. Hang on. Yeah, they're coming out. A pike? Yep. And the driver. Thirties, short hair, clean shaven. Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, yeah, right. Well, it's just that we're ringing from an OP. Uh, can the local CI do it? Well, we've just eyeballed it. Yes, I realise that we're on call and I realise that we're close. It's just that I'm a member down right now and something's starting to break. It's a gunsmith who's been importing rifles and cutting them down for, as handguns, you know. And we're heading for the car. The delivery kit. Can you just hang on a second? Thank you. Going for the boot. Looks like they're talking about whatever's in there. Come on, go for it. Pike's reaching inside. He's picking up something heavy. It's got to be the guns, mate. Oh, shit. Grog. You there, boss? Yeah, sorry, it's a false alarm. Right. Right. Okay, thanks. We're out of here, mate. Agberg, Middle hey? Park. You're bloody joking. Who's going to take over here? There's no one else on call, mate. Mate, we can't leave this. There's a new friggin' Joker in the play. I'll ring Boomer and Happy. I've been bludgeoned all day at court. Bloody terrific. One of them copped a the building wise and the ambulance long gone. They might have carked it. That's all we need, a shit fight with homicide. Yeah, our gun supply will be halfway to sunny Queensland. TJR in. Yeah, well, with the heavy domestics here, at least they'll have the kettle on, mate. Uh, I've seen you take your bastards waiting for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Sergeant Peter Faithful. I'm seeing the detective Andrew Saunders made the crime. Right, no worries. For the log, mate, the log. Oh, sorry. Wouldn't have any chewy on you, would you, pal? Uh, yeah, I had actually. Good on you. Well, I'll chew and you talk. No, I, I don't care what you say. I know what I'm saying. Uh, but I'm uh, going to be excited, would you please? Oh, no, no. Please, you're so important. I can't find them, Mrs. Abbott. Excuse me. Uh, Peter Faithful from the Major Crime Squad. Shell Roger, South Melbourne. Well, what can't you find? Um, oh, his glasses. She, she said they're another pair. There are too many yeah, places. Okay. I, I can't find them. Cheryl. Cheryl. <laughs> can you just leave her in here? I need a few minutes, okay? Betty. We're not leaving this place. Peter Faithful, Major Crime. Ragnar Baston. I'm sorry. Ragnar, Estonia. Okay, so what do you got? Not a lot. Clear the uh, neighbours out and secure the scene. He's off on another planet. Right, just tell me what you know, okay? Were they in bed? Yes, then two crooks masked up, one with a shooter came. Oh, which to... one? Uh, she said he was uh, skinny. Come on, talk to me, talk to me. Hey, what sort of gun? Uh, she was vague, but a sawn off shotty. What? Did he cop one? No, no, he always goes around with half his face hanging off. Don't screw with me, Ragnar, okay? Just do your job. Has he been shot? No. He's probably kicked and pistol whipped. Okay, talk to me about the other crook. Um, carried a bar at Jemmy. Well, how'd they get away? In the car. The yeah. old blokes. The household yes, car. Yes, loaded everything in and took off. Okay, do you give them D24 a general broadcast? Yes, yes, Regina. How long ago? 
What did I call him? Yeah. 10, 15 minutes. Right, any word? No. Ring him again, OK? Use my name on every available car. And they should have done, swapped it over, OK? And done a changeover within two to three blocks, OK? You understand? Yeah. So, um, it's your job then, is it? Yeah, well, I really would appreciate your help, Ragnar, OK? Oh, He's a stubborn old dude, isn't he? Yes. My name's Peter Faithful. I'm from the Major Crime Squad. Oh, oh, Jeez. Jeez. What's that? It's his heart to get to pay. Get the oxygen, mate. <laughs> Sit back, please, Mr. Arnold. I want you to go with him. Cheryl's doing that. If he gives her something useful and hops off a tweet, she's going to end up in a Supreme Court witness box, and that's a bloody lonely She place. needs the experience. Hang on. Listen, I need you to have that experience. I'd feel a lot happier with someone of your rank handling a top silk as ripping into a dying deposition. Okay, okay, but it's a shit job, and this is a new bloody suit. Thank you. Constable. He's yes, coming sir. with you. No worries. more like it. Nearly wiped out by an ambulance. They're usually three hours gone. Yeah, and 15 Mr. Plots haven't walked all over your crime scene. How many is it this time? Six. Oh, I must admit, I think that's a record. How did you get me here so quick? I put a call in on the way. Before you'd even arrived. I'm shocked. I ain't Cocker and Frenzy. Thanks, sir. Well, it's thank of the same bastards and I want to get their balls on taste. Okay, so what's the score? Come on, mate. Yeah, I'll be there soon. You should be bloody laughing. Look, yeah. I'm still waiting on... Look, I've got forensic here, right? I'm, I'm still waiting on uh, fingerprints and photographics. Yeah, well, listen, mate. We reckon it'll be about three... Right, and fingerprints? Away. That's a normal pattern. What, morning is in daylight? Yeah, Come on, boss. Know, they that. get on call you know, pay. Surely they can bloody earn it. Yeah. Right, thanks. Well, right now, mate. They're on their way. Nice of them. Right? Lots of books on collecting. Yeah, Wine, yeah, gemstones, yeah, Melanesian art, stamps. Are they the sorts of things that were pinched? Okay. Look, I'm stuffed if I know. Just thought I'd give you a clue. Reckon you give us a clue about the car, Goose? Uh, what car? Well, they drove off in the old Goose's <laughs> car. Yellow Toyota Crescita 78 model. It's still no word? Not a bloody peep, mate. Look, are we checking every lane or what? Mate, we've got five mobiles on it. They'll find it. Substantial lock, but your short screws and soft dish would add up to one bang. Had a bit of pranker, mate. Yeah. I'm getting a touch of deja vu. So, can we get a cast of that? We're gonna need it. And the one on the jam here. It could be even more interesting. Is it the same as the other egg birds? I said a touch of deja vu, Andrew, not a thunderbolt of sudden unearthly power. Love it when he talks to you. <laughs> so they came through the backyard? Maybe. Okay, with a jemmy? Jemmy. Kick. Okay. Yeah. So what about footprints? Yes, a whole gaggle. What, a sneaker? Possibly. So one of them was wearing sneakers. <laughs> He's doing it to me again. When I know exactly who's walked along here tonight, I'll use a very laborious process of... All right, mate, just testing. Oh. Well, sick the dog on a wing. What dog's that? That dog. She got a bloody dog. Maybe it was the crooks. <sighs> Could be a small wolf. No, Pike's the gunsmith. He owns the place. It's the other head who could be the supplier. Well, he did what? When? Well, if he comes back and starts pulling guns out of the boot, do the bust, all right? I've got to go. Have you found it? No, there's dog food. Still nothing on the Arthur's car. How far out? To four blocks every lane street. It ain't there. Fluff. Look, one thing about these crooks, they always rip off the household car, they dump it within a couple of blocks to a changeover, right? So Mate, what listen, happened? Listen, I reckon their own car wouldn't start, so they're shot through in the old geezers. Right, and they're still out there driving around. Bloody the thing. I agree. Let's go for broke. I'll take D24, media liaison. Can you do uh, taxis, watching companies? Good on you. We might have these bastards here. The night owls coming out of the woodwork. Sorry to drag you out of bed. Not a problem. So where's everyone else? You're looking at them. Well, who's going to follow up the sightings? 
they're any worthwhile, the uniform boys? Look, I can't rely on them. We might get our first description. We might get a fix on where they're at. Now, I believe we need another crew. That can do. Look, they could still be out there driving around in the bloody thing. The too many ifs and could be's. They'd probably just dump that extra block away. We found a broken down getaway car yet. Until then, I'm doing what I can. So what did the DDI say? It's not up to him. No, it's up to the senior sergeant to make a reasonable operational decision. I don't care if you think I'm being unreasonable. I'm not going to pull in an off-duty crew on a long shot. Oh, the last bloke that sat in that chair would have. Well, maybe that's why you were shanghaied. Oh, and we wouldn't want that happening to you now, would we? Just because you're carrying a load, don't think you can get away with that sort of garbage with me. Beautiful, beautiful, and right next to his bed with a very clear spray pattern on the wall behind. Oh, my God, look at that. Beautiful. You are leading somewhere, I suppose, Goosey. Yeah. Just going under the bed. Here you go, Danny. A couple of real close-ups, mate. Oi, oi. That's a shot. Get right in, mate. Please. There's a section of carpet cut out. God, I've never actually You're come right across right it right before, right. but it feels like yeah. your classic case of keeping your money right under your bed. Getting real close there, mate. You got black and white, I can't. Hey! Shut a brick! <laughs> Who tore the bloody wings off it, mate? That's the wolf. Excuse me. James Arthur. So how is he? Stable. They reckon. Mm -hmm. Full of pethidine. What, heart attack? No, no, a tablet fixed him. Something about his arteries getting hard. Angina? Yeah, he's had it before. I'll be with you in a moment, Mrs. Arthur. Has he said anything? <laughs> oh, shit. They're the damned animals. I don't remember and leave me alone. Who's that, your daughter? Uh, Pamela Hanson, married, two kids, Brighton. Who rang her? The old one. When? Just before she rang us. OK, look, I'm going to need to talk to her alone. Why? Her mother. Right. Has she been checked out? Yeah, she's fine. I'm not worried about shock. No, they went till she arrived. I can't believe this. Yeah, look, I'm going to have to get him apart. Uh, can you keep this in going? Look, it's under control, Mrs Hanson. Give it any minute. I'm sorry, but do you know what they're doing? Doesn't anyone care what happens? It's all right, Mrs. Hanson. No, it's not all right. It could be lying there with a the fractured skull. I mean, what about the x-rays? Look, I'll, uh, I'll find out what I can for you. Mrs. Hanson, is it? Look, my name's Peter Faithful. I'm from the Major Crime School. We'll be handling this investigation. Handling it? Yeah, but are you going to catch them? Look, depending on what a doctor says, I'd like to take your mother home for a while. That's all right with you, Mrs. Arthur. Home? No, you mean. Well, as soon as possible. Are you kidding? She's got to stay here. Look. It's very important that we find out as much detail as we can as quickly as possible. And I'll be left here by myself. Hey, wake up. Come on, Miss Arthur. Find you some more plants. You right there? Oh, the uh, fingerprints are here, Sergeant. You need some coffee? Yeah, yeah, I'll grab some. I'll have some sent out. Right, thanks. Yes, that's a good print. Okay, yeah, uh, we've still got a bit to do, so. We'll be careful. What did he Maybe say? He make it. He's from no, was this serious? Just make sure you do the lounge room real good, okay? They went berserk in there. They both had gloves on. Does that make a difference? Uh, yes, yes. They uh, could still leave a type of print, though. That's what that was. From a glove? Yes. Pigskin, I'd say. Betty, um, were they both wearing the same kind? Yes, they looked the same. Betty, what colour? Black, I think. What type? They were like... James keeps a pair in the car. For driving? 
Yes. He suffers terribly from chillblains. They hardly cover here. I tried to get him into woolen gloves, but he, he just refused to take any notice of me, and he okay, just... Okay, Thanks for that. Okay, you're being a real help to us. All right, I'll just let you get dressed now, okay? You're quite right. Stubborn as an old coot. Taking your bloody throat out. Nearly did once, ruined a brand new jumper. Goose, you gonna be long? Why? I've got a victim in here hanging by a three. Up. Oh, right, I can leave her the rest out. So, how'd you go with the cast? Too jagged for Impressil. Don't invite him out for a housewarming, mate. So when in doubt, demolish. Good idea. Okay, Jack. So, you're doing really good. Uh, what was in there? The New Guinea things. Drums and masks. Doing really well. Eh? I was a teacher. I'm doing really well. Not real good. Grandma, I never was too well at that. <laughs> it's all right. I'm sorry. It's okay. I want to do what I can. I know it's important to you. And we appreciate it. What value would you put on these items, please? Is it Pam? Yeah, no. You bloody What value, you please, Mrs. Arthur? James is the one to ask about that. I could only make a guess. Of? $6,000. Can't get over the walls. All the paintings. OK, we're almost there. Is there anything else that you can think of? I don't think we're supposed to have them anymore. It's terribly cruel. But, but they're quite old. What are? Feathers. Feathers? Birds of paradise. How many? 20 or 30. Just feathers, or...? Uh, they were attached to the bits of their bodies. Don't ask me their value. I don't know. OK, we'll just leave it there for a minute. Mrs Arthur, I'd now like to go into the bedroom. But if you can just uh, excuse me for a few minutes. Sergeant. Do you think we should have another cup of tea first? Do you want to swap with the Connie at the front? Sorry. OK, just watch where she walks. Mate, that was Mooney. Household car's been found. All the stuff they've been scoring, no trace of them. Where was it? At the back of the bloody Cranbourne somewhere. In the middle of nowhere, a local farmer came across it. Did he see anyone? Nah. We could have had him. Mate, they got lucky. Oh, bullshit. They stuffed up. Someone drove out there and, and, and helped them out, mate. When should have given me the crew when I asked for it? Well, the way things panned out, it wouldn't make much difference, mate. Mate, but it could have if he wasn't such a weak prick. Come on, mate, it's a bit bloody rough. We haven't got an inspector to carry the can for him. Mate, whose side are you on? I'm the lone voice of reason in a quagmire of political service, mate. You are a bloody wanker. Oh, yeah, that too. Some of it was my mother's. Some from her mother. OK, you're doing real good. The section of floorboard under Mr Arthur's bed. He took a big chunk out of his finger making that. What was in it? I suppose we were silly. If you wouldn't mind just answering me directly, what was in it? Money. It was for Pam. In case something's happened to us, she'd have it there for probate. How much? $10,000. Did Pam know about it? Yes. Anyone else? No. It was our little secret. Would Pam's husband know about it? Well, yes. Tony knew, of course. But no one else? No one else, no. So these must be the grandkids. He looks like a Jason. He's a Robbie. <laughs> and Melissa? Rebecca. Not even close. I bet you they're cheeky young buggers. I wouldn't use that word myself. But yes, they can be that at times. Sorry. You married Miss... Peter. Oh, Peter. And I'm Betty. Mrs Arthur reminds me of teaching. 
Makes me feel too old, I'm afraid. <laughs> you married, Peter? Yes, uh, my wife's in the job. In the job? Uh, sorry, the, uh, the police force. And children? Uh, no. But you're trying, I hope. Well, we're thinking about it. <laughs> Can you excuse me? Hospital. The daughter? Yes. She wants to speak to her. So what did she say? Well, the x-rays are OK. There's no fractures and they're stitching him up. So he's OK? No drama? No. All right, just tell her that her mother's fine and she'll ring back in half an hour. Right. But you want to speak to her? Well, she can wait. Uh, the scene is at the front, Sergeant. So you need to go over from me. Right. Is everything all right? That was just a quick call from the hospital to say that Nothing's broken and, and uh, that he's resting comfortably. Take a seat. Mrs. Arthur, Betty. I know this is easy for me to say this, but I want to take you back now a few hours. So can you tell me what time you went to, uh, went to bed? I was in by 10.30. And James? A bit after that. So what time did you go to sleep? 4.11, I think. But you'd be better asking James about times and things like that. OK, I'll do that. But right now, I just want your side of things. So you went to sleep and you woke up. I didn't look at the clock. It must have been after midnight. Right. What woke you up? The light, the main light. And the shouting, terrible shouting. What did you see? James was sitting up. He was waving a magazine at someone. And his nose started bleeding. And they were punching him in the face. Over and over. Who was punching him? The skinny one with the gun. What did you do then? I got my legs out and the other one, he was shorter, smaller, he pointed at me. Was he holding anything? Yes, he had an iron bar thing. An iron bar? Yes. I thought he was going to hit me. Did he say anything? He told me to stay on the bed. He screamed it. His mask was sucking into his mouth. Can you describe the mask? Wool. Black wool with holes. With holes for eyes? Yes. What colour were his eyes? Blue, icy. What did he say to you exactly? He told me to, he said, stay on the bed. He swore. OK, he said, stay on the... On the fucking bed. OK, that's OK. And James said, would you mind your language, please? There's a lady present. Keep going, Betty, keep going. And the one with the gun smashed it right up against his face and broke his glasses, poked the barrel through the frame into his eye and he said, do you want me to lick your brains off the wall, Charlie? <laughs> Morning, sir. Bloody funny. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so the firearms and the Agbergs are still with Peter's crew. 
Yes, I've had to keep them doubled up. Well, I can't argue manning levels in here are not what they used to be. Shake-ups have a habit of depleting the ranks. So is there any word on the vacancy? What vacancy? Our inspector. Oh, that'll be filled. It's not hurting you operationally, is it, going through arm robbery? No, 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 it's just a query. Yeah. Have a look at what you've got. Give priority to these bergs. The press are going to start barking. I need something for them. You like the lizard drinking dabs? I need something fast. Agberg, same crooks as last time? Yeah, a local van recovered a stolen vehicle a couple of blocks away from the Arthur's. Flat battery, so it must have been them. Oh, good one. Hey, what's Wally doing here? He's letting our lovable senior sergeant kiss his ass. Jungle drums were right. What about me? Yeah, he was pushed in here by the break. Where'd that come from? From Andy Clough, one of the secretaries upstairs. Oh, she heard Wally... Today, how's it going? Number four, you reckon? Ah, oh, it's looking that way, sir. And the old bloke nearly crossed the River Jordan. Well, he had one foot in the boat, but he uh, decided to stay on dry land. Go on. Wally told the AC that Moon didn't want the job. Was happy to stay with the soggies. So why didn't you tell him to stick it? <laughs> no, that's what you would have done. Hey? No, thank you, sir. That order doesn't suit me. Can I have another one, please? Yeah. Sorry to hear they pulled you off the AP last night. Wrong place, wrong time, mate. Yeah, you owe me one, Noddy. Yeah, well, now we're even. Still, one good thing we permitted to make on the car. Of Trevor Ray Coulter? Yeah, five prize for possessed firearms. Oh, this morning at peak hour. So we were right. He was supplying the gas. Looks that way. If you want us to keep on, I can... Uh... No, no, no need for that. I've just been on the phone to Roberts. I'm flicking it over to them. Now, hang on a second. That's going to make us look like we sit down to piss. You've all been trying to do too many jobs. It's not working. Well, maybe it would if we got some token support from upstairs. No, I want you full-time on the Eggbergs. You show me everything you've got. This is part of a cast of the door jam from the Campbell job. And this is a bit of the actual jam I took from the Arthurs. I can't tell anything. No, no you can't tell. Chris made the guy fiddle with the focus. No. So the Jimmy that did that and the Jimmy that left that was similar. That's good. You didn't say identical. I've just been talking to Mark. His uh, glove print was similar to the one I found in Elston Week. Oh, same sort of thing. Yeah, good, but equivocal. Not like fingerprints. Oh, well, at least the uh, jury will have something to look at. They love this sort of stuff. Mm. Oh, excuse me. These are 16 hours. I should be home in bed. Uh, what about the blood? All O positive, same as the old bloke. Uh, all his, you reckon? Well, judging from the various trails and patterns, I doubt he even lifted a finger. <sighs> You're not cheering me up, Goose. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll try these on you, then. Nice, juicy, glossies of the uh, footprints. Uh, that's the sneaker. Don't ask me what sort yet, and there are scores of them. New? Old? Newer than older. Uh, Dif different from the ones that we found in Elstonwick, but the Bright. size is... Brighton, you're, you're right, but the size is consistent. Seven or eight. Mr Short. Mr Short. And these are, uh, Mr Skinny's. It's a work boot. Or hiking. I've come across them before. And I, uh, trained with the Soggies, actually. But we won't force the laugh about that. Blundstones. Made in Tasmania, believe it or not. What, well, a new pair, you reckon? Well, judging from the clear edges, yeah. I'd say so. Well, I should be able to afford it. They're well up past the uh, half a million buck stage. Hey, adds up. Uh, anything else? Um, the substrate they walked inside could be interesting, but I'll, I'll need a few days. See you tomorrow. Hey, don't you ever sleep. When I heard the car leave, I was still too afraid to move. But after a few minutes, I went into the living room and found my husband crawling on the floor with his face covered in blood. OK, and the, uh, the next bit? I did not give these people permission to come into my house or to... It can't be into our home. No, uh, this is what you're saying. So it's better if it's not a statement. All right. Into my house or to steal the things from my house. OK, if you can just uh, sign it there. Here? Yeah. It's like teaching. So much red tape. 
Okay, if you can just read out the next bit before you sign it, and uh, then I'll get all this typed up properly, and then I'll want you to sign that too, okay? Nothing is going to be the same, is it? No. No, it's not. Darby. Oh, yes, um... Local Collator Neighbourhood Watch, a couple of possible sightings last night. Uh, the crook's on their way to the house from the van. I should know more tomorrow. The gear they wear? Whole heap of outlets for the boots and the gloves. Sneakers are a joke. Yeah, OK, leave that for the moment. Uh, Docker, join up with property on tracing the collections. But that's art. Docker wouldn't know the difference between a McCubbin and an Amagira. Amagira? I hate Jap paintings. Is that a word? Yeah, one second. Darby, a few more things to go through. Oh, sorry, Sarge. I had just knocked off. No, no, take ten minutes. I'm late for the babysitter. You'll chuck her a few more dollars. Oh, they're going to pay me overtime, are they? No, no chance of that. Then where are all these extra dollars? OK. All right. Do we'll we, see you tomorrow. Do we have to keep having this conversation, mate? I have another life out right. there and it won't just go away. So, you want to start shaking the tray here, Abel? Well, it's not oh, enough right. coming through. It's time to show the flag. I'd prefer to keep the hammer in the cupboard. Look, it's just a couple of pub orders. You can't justify it upstairs unless they've got something specific. One of Fluff's informants was down at the Royal Crest Hotel at Port Melbourne. He heard that someone was trying to push some feathers there at lunchtime. What, bit of paradise? Well, he didn't know. He didn't want to tip his hand. Feathers? It's going to sound great. Listen, some real shipment drink there. A lot of the locals. Oh, well, I'm not doing anything. I might tag along. Uh, no need for that. I need the air. Well, have a dog and buck yourself, eh? Ex soggy. I'll have it die hard. What's the problem? You reckon I'm going to stuff it up? No, I've got full confidence in you, Boomer, or the crews. Yeah, we realise that you're under certain pressures and that there are some things that we need to bother you with. All right, that's the way it might have been. But I like to do things a little bit differently. Right. Stand up. <laughs> Funny place to keep that. Do I know you? No. I do now. Name. I don't have to tell you that unless I'm in a car. <laughs> You'll be thick. What do you reckon, Swampy? Tell him your name. What for? Because if you don't, I'm going to shit on you from a great height. So where's the licence for the pistol you just dropped? It's not mine. Whose is it then? I don't know. Mate. You were standing right next to him. It's got nothing to do with me, Mr Faithful. I've got eyes, Swampy. Your word against mine. <laughs> you reckon? That'll be right. You'll all see it if you tell him. Possess pistol. <clears throat> You're not. Get the transplant yet, Harry? No, we're not under the light, Mr. Moon. Fair dink. You're not here. You're not here. Right. Harry Collins, Andrew Saunders. There you go. Harry's a public here. Came across Harry in armed robbery. Those days are long gone, eh, Harry? What do you want? Andrew's on those oldies, Agbergs. Yeah, my old man's just up the road. Why don't you tell him? You're not quiet, are you? What are you doing? Magic words, Harry. Legal license and condition. Do you reckon they'd be interested in those docket heads you've got in there? Half of them drunk and disorderly. Throwing handguns into ashtrays. What are you saying? And I happen to know. You got a couple of black marks against your name already for underage drinking. Number three, you lose your license. Do you want me to arrange that? You bastard. Why? No, it's up to you. Still, I suppose assistant manager of your own pub's not that bad, is it? I haven't heard nothing. That's the truth. Feathers, Harry. Today, someone trying to flog him. Feathers? You joking? Who was it? I don't know. Look, keep me out of it. You can keep yourself out if you're discreet. 
Did you want him for your old lady? She's dead. No, I didn't know. But I still want that name, Harry. You give me a call when you got it, and we never had this conversation, OK? Shit. Right. I suppose we better get you back inside. You make sure you kick and scream. We wouldn't want you to lose those valued customers, would we? It's flame and blackmail. It's more like flame and smart business practice. The footprints in the garden by the back fence. They didn't even have the decency to leave any clothing fibres on it, by the way. Thoughtless pricks. So what they walked into the house was a substrate that probably came from the backyard. A sandy loam, mountain soil mixture. Which tells us what? Well, basically, absolutely nothing. But. Well, I'm glad there's a but. Yeah. The good old... Hazzy Blundies. You know, excellent at trapping large chunks of dirt down in the valleys of the soil patterns, and unless you attack it with a stick, it can stay in there for days. Weeks. You see that? But you said his pair was new, mate. Well, not as new as I thought. Uh, exhibit 27, now. Uh, they call them chunks of blunt soil. Their patterns coincide with the boot, and uh, there were three of them near the back door. Which probably came out when he kicked it. Yeah, we wouldn't argue with that. And, uh... One on the floor in front of the passenger seat of the Arthur's car. But the, the interesting thing is the bits are quite dry and hard around the edges. They've been trapped in there for some time, a matter of days at least. So they didn't come from the Arthur's? Right. So where did they come from? Well, as far as I can tell so far, all from the same place. There's a general consistency there between them. Yes, and? And the type of soil it might be is what I'm working on. Now, it might even be diatomaceous earth. There are diatoms galore. The um, silicified frustules, actually, of uh, tiny little aquatic plants. Look at that. And their radial symmetry is extraordinary. Goose, is this going to tell us where the bastard lives? Uh-huh. That's the big question. Well, has it got an answer? Well, the X-ray diffractor's having a nervous breakdown trying to tell me all the other minerals and great globs of organics that are in it, but the soil types around this part of the world are fairly well documented. Is that a yes or a no? It's a definite maybe. With a warning codicil. Don't hold your breath. Well, they don't like changing their routines. Household cars are always found with the front seat pushed right forward and the mirrors adjusted for Mr Short. And he always stays with the wife. Yeah, while the other one makes all the threats about don't ring the bloody coppers. And this time viciously bashes the husband. Yeah, well, Mr Skinny's the dominant one, but is he the brains? Morning, sweetheart. Don't, don't call, call me sweetheart. sweetheart. She turns me on when you smile, darling. Well, I'll well, have to start smiling then, won't I? Hey, where's me? Ah, uh, went out, mate. How yeah, well? Dunno. What, did he leave a message? Mate, why does it give the bloke a half a break? Mm -hmm. Peter, Fluff, listen to this. He was half all right at the pub last Mr. night. Mr. Skinny, mate. Middle Park. Lick your brains off the wall at Brighton. Blow your head off and shit down your neck. Old fashioned romantic, eh? Well, he's graphic, but when it comes to culture, he's worse than Dockett. Jesus, what a mess. Now, he said that about a fair dink and Picasso in Camberwell. A lot of people agree with him, mate. And the, <laughs> the Chinese jade figurines in Elstonwick shoved those down his pants and made bad hemorrhoid jokes. Maybe it is dogged. Now, I don't think this guy's in any danger of becoming a potential Einstein. See, they're both as thick as house bricks, but they've managed to pull off four good jobs. Just doesn't add up. Look, it's got to be in the dubs. Find it. Right. You know what I reckon, mate? What? I reckon our crook wanted to be a neurologist, wasn't tall enough, ends up a bloody gynecologist. No. What's the mail? Or are these from the museum? What are they? Bird of Paradise. One of many types, yes. And Mrs. Arthur was right, they are an illegal import. Quite rare. Unlike these. Beautiful, but common. Male peacocks. We got it from Des Kirk. Sit down. Do you know him? No. Desmond Wendell Kirk? Well, he's the bloke that Fluff's geek saw in the pub yesterday, trying to flog a box of them at the crooks down there for their lovely ladies. Then we'll go back there tonight, tip them over, see what we come up with. No. What? No, you won't. I don't know how to make it any plainer than that. What's this? It's the brief for last night's possessed pistol. Uh, 
You got me down here as a witness. Did I see this? Well, you were there. I need you for corroboration. Now, you're masking me. I couldn't tell whether it was Swampy or the young punk. You were standing right behind me. It doesn't give me X-ray vision. Look, I'm only asking you to say what happened. No way. It's all right for you to suggest what I saw, but you don't go making my mind up. That's not the... OK. Fine. Hey, Noddy. Not. Who are you up to, huh? I'm going to go see Wallace. Jesus, mate, don't do it. What's the problem? Well, sir, I basically need to talk to you about what's happening downstairs. I keep hitting a wall of frustration. I'm being hampered. I can't get things done. Well, what do you mean? Every time I ask for something, he turns me down flat. Well, when you say he? The new senior sergeant. Look, he is supposed to look out for us, keep us going, not stuff us up just for the sake of it. Now, with respect, sir, I don't think that he understands the way that we operate. Now, going by the book may be OK for the SOG, but for major crime, you know, just as well as I, it doesn't operate that way. Don't tell me what I think, Peter. I might start reminding you how far out of line you are. I realise that, sir, but I don't have an inspector. I didn't have a lot of choice. The only thing I can say is Senior Sergeant Moon is doing his job. <laughs> Look, but is he right for it? I'm not saying that he's a bad I know what bloke. you're saying, but I'm telling him he's doing the job he was told to do. Told to do? If you'd stopped to think, you might have wondered whether you are simply working on instructions from higher up. But that would go against everything that we've been set up for. Times change, Peter. Pull the blinkers off. Harry. Maybe you're black and white, right in front of me, right? Um, yeah, it was good, but, uh, people. Yeah, that'd be good. If you anything else, give us a call. Right, thanks. Was it Wallace? No, why? I've just been to see him. What about me? I had a bitch. He said you're straight. Well, I didn't realise it was them. I thought it was you. Might have just let a bomb, right? It was already burning, but you couldn't see it. Now you've reinforced all their worries. This squad doesn't know when to pull its head in and take the new party line. Well, we always used to say. We're only as good as the complaints against us. Not anymore. Have you ever paused to consider why it is we have so much strife getting a warrant? Why the IRD comes in after every search? OK. When you're up to your neck in shit, you keep your mouth shut, head down, ass up. You understand? Oh, yeah. It's starting to get through. You'll be right, but there's somebody there. Okay. Wait, that was Mrs. Arthur. We got problems. Is this the victim? Yeah, I'm the victim. Does anyone care about me? So what happened? Oh, I'm here to read their gas meter. Uh, and the old guy springs out from behind a bush and, uh, and threatens me with this edging thing. Uh, oh, whatever. Has the constable explained to you what happened here the other night? Yeah, I read all about that. But that doesn't give anybody the... You might just the... um, waiting here for a few minutes. That, that doesn't give anybody the right to, to scare hell out of me. I want him charged Listen, with assault. Just He's explain it all to him again, OK? But this time in detail. So where is he? I'll be in the kitchen. Mum wants to speak to you first. How are you, Betty? I found it in here when I was cleaning up. 
till yesterday it was in the garage covered in rust. It's his old navy gun. Permit ran out years ago. It's supposed to have been fixed so that it didn't fire, but perhaps seems to... It's still got the firing pin. I'm afraid, Peter. I'm afraid he's going to end up shooting someone. Look, I, uh, I think it's better if I talk to him myself. <sighs> Mate, this is not going to help your gas bill. Pam and Betty were worried. Have you renewed the permit on this? No. Then I'll have to take it with me. I'll give you a receipt. You thought it was them again, didn't you? Look, I'll tell you what. It would have been a lot worse if you had have tried to jack him up. Look, I know that sounds piss weak, but you just don't argue with a shotgun. I would have done the same thing myself. I did nothing. I went through a whole war, and when it really mattered, I froze. There was nothing to you... Do know why he started hitting me? He told me to get up, and when I kept staring at him, he thought I was being defiant. Don't you see, it's not what I should have done or shouldn't have done, it's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get out of bed and stand up to them to hell with the consequences. I wanted to defend my wife. Well, it's like you said, Digger. All those grief and trauma accounts that are swarming all over Mr. Arthur. What are they going to come up with, eh? Like bloody hole, that's what. Fluff, you're a born optimist. <laughs> Victims are forever, pal. What do we know? We know these two are puppets. Yeah, I reckon. And they can't see it till I start drawing blood. But they know what they're looking for. Third party pulling the strings, mate. Well, they didn't just whack a pin in the phone book. Saunders? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, our friends in the armed robbery squad have just knocked over our two gun runners, mate. Both signed, sealed, and deep bloody livid. You're kidding? No. Mate, we do all the work. They get all the elephant stamps. 